It's actually not a tutorial, so you don't have to really write along or stuff like that, but uh, if you want to have the same slides on your phone because it's too small or you don't see enough or for the digital people out there who are not here in, as a real person, um, maybe it's uh, nice to follow along as well. Um, so I can always go back to the slide and um, yeah, show you this so you can, um, if you want to rewatch some stuff of that. Okay, who am I? I'm Thorsten. I'm a polylang software developer, architect, thingy. We can choose our thing ourselves, right? Um, so um, I on not only write in Python, but a bunch of other languages. I'm a professional dev, like professional since about 12 and a half years, I would say. Uh, but I've written my first code on the Amiga, uh, quick basic, uh, back in the days, a really crappy text adventure based on a pen and paper game. And, um, and reproducing the crappy DVD logo. I, I don't know if you know that, at, at least the older people here maybe, the one which uh, moved in the uh, TV from corner to corner, never right hits the corner, and uh, that's uh, always uh, something I wanted to see, and so I wrote it myself. Um, yeah, basically um, that. Um, beside that, I'm a proud dad, I'm a husband, uh, also proud. Uh, ask my wife about that. Um, I love reading, table tennis, and I love extreme metal because it helps me calm down. Might be surprising for some people, but still. Um, what problem am I trying to solve here? Um, I want um, you to learn the possibilities of the built-in standard library of Python. So Python is a, has a huge ecosystem um, built in as well as on PyPI and so on, but I want to show you what is possible inside of Python itself without ever using pip install and stuff like that, or if you want to use UV or stuff, uh, one of the modern alternatives. Um, most of those are super awesome for simple uh, cases, and um, you don't always need external libraries like pandas and so on, but obviously it's really for the simple cases. As soon as, soon as you really need um, some some speed up in, in large data, obviously the pure C written stuff is uh, faster. A um, bunch of those tools are useful in the day-to-day -day work. I would say most of them, maybe not all, but at least most of them. Um, and let's see, so this talk is dedicated to beginners, um, maybe a little bit for the intermediate um, developers in Python. So hopefully most of you um, learn something new, at least some of the tools. And yeah, uh, what am I not trying to solve? So I won't solve any huge performance issues here. So uh, when you have that as a problem, most likely Pandas or whatever tool you're using or when you're a web developer, fast API and so on are the best, better solution. Um, yeah, um, I won't solve any lead code problems here or something like that. So um, sometimes the solution I'm writing here is not the perfect solution, but just to show off the tool, not uh, to have the perfect solution available for you. Um, I'm basically having uh, a bunch of chapters. Um, I hope we get, th or we pretty likely get through with uh, one, two, three, so fetching data, cleaning data, and processing data, uh, furthermore, and maybe we can go into the miscellaneous and additional stuff, and very unlikely we get into some vanilla Python server implementation later, but we can talk about that after the talk if you want. What's the story? So um, in the beginning of the first uh, uh, draft of this, uh, this talk was like, okay, this is a tool, and this is a tool, and this is a tool, and that goes on for like 45 minutes, and I thought it was a little bit boring. So who's familiar with Terry Pratchett? Yay, for those who are not familiar with Terry Pratchett, um, this is a fantasy author who writes very f funny fantasy, and um, I tried to go along a little bit uh, with the Terry Pratchett world. So in this case, we are working on a project in Angmorpok, which is a large city in this world. Um, and there's an unseen library, and it has a librarian who wants to finally implement some digitalization magic. Um, and in the first step, we already have some um, yeah, magic funnel. Um, let's call it API in our world, sending us book data one by one. And our job is it to clean the data, work on the data, save it in some Excel or CSV, and um, because, um, yeah, I had to use some goal for that. Uh, I created a full uh, generation stuff for random books with random titles and all this uh, stuff like that, but to be honest, um, I 
didn't end up using a lot of that, so it was more like a procrastination project. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it's very sophisticated, and there are a lot of uh, uh, <laughs> random data there. Um, yeah, but still made fun. Um, but we will working with those kind of books. Um, example book, for example, we have here um, some random title, authors, it, uh, maybe the book was lent by someone, maybe it was lent since some time, um, and um, yeah, we're working with that. Okay. Um, first chapter, fetching data. And yeah, I know it's the wrong um, fandom universe, but I, <laughs> it was a good chance to put data into that, and um, yeah, I loved it. Um, yeah, everyone knows stuff like that. We use a request library, which is one of the most popular libraries you can install and use. And a lot of other um, packages are actually have that as, um, as a dependency. And what you can do with that, I want to fetch a book, and um, it requests from some uh, server and uh, gives me back some JSON. Um, but it turns out we don't really have to do it like this, especially for our simple cases. Uh, we have the URL lib request, and for normal post and get request, we can actually use that. And it's almost the same, like we are opening a URL, we're reading data, and then we can return it by uh, JSON loads, which is another library already built in into Python. So for example, in this case, we are fetching a, a book from our server. We don't uh, run today because uh, of time issues, but still. Uh, and this is the dictionary you might get out of it. Uh, I move it to the top because we are going to continue on the uh, bottom. Yeah. Um, the first step I want, or the first thing I want to show you is a little bit more uh, related to a typing talk rega regarded to typing Python. But uh, basically, I think it's a, still a good thing to show this because I met already a bunch of developers who didn't know about that or thought it was uh, something totally different. But um, it really can help us write code. It uh, helps the IDE help us with the correct uh, type hints, but uh, it also has a positive side effect of giving us um, actually um, something to test about with a various static code checkers which check um, how good we are doing our job. Um, because in the end we're all human and we're doing mistakes and static code checkers will help us doing less mistakes or at least um, one category less of uh, mistakes. Um, this is how it looks like. It still functions the same as a dictionary. You can still uh, work with that as always, um, but it's, uh, yeah, it's now uh, typed. And um, we put it in there after the arrow, so we actually know what this API gives us back. So a good idea is for, for external APIs to type the API so you really know what you get back. Um, you can also specify that you don't always get some keys, and you can do it the other way around. You know all of them are not really required, but those we really mark as required. So this is how it looks like in Vim. I'm a neckbeard Linux user, so of course I'm using Vim. And um, yeah, basically it helps us um, getting to know what data we are working with. Okay, let's continue. This, by, uh, <laughs> for example, is uh, one of the, um, is the librarian of the Unseen li uh, um, Library. Nobody knows his name, but um, yeah, if we would know it, um, it would be easier to turn him back to a human. That is one of the thing from the story. Um, there are a lot of books, and we only have a limited resources. And this means we need to work on books in batches. And um, there are plenty of solutions, and we can work on various um, angles on that. But still, let's lo first look how we might have done it before Python 3.12. And um, it is already a code you find numerous places on Stack Overflow, and uh, even ChatGPT advises to use something like this. So, for example, in this case, we have our batch function. It takes some list, it takes a size, and it gives us back a, a list of tuples, so um, uh, of fixed size, which means um, if I have 10 books, I always get only two at the same time. Um, yeah, it works basically like this. Um, I don't even know if the if is actually necessary. I really just took this from, from ChatGPT just to show you this, <laughs> that is, uh, it, it really is something that is uh, advised to use. And um, in the end, we're returning this and we have some function. Of course, we can improve this. And um, one of the tools um, really is useful in this case is iSlice. iSlice is not so, uh, I, I don't know if many people know about it, at least uh, in the beginning. 
um, but um, it allows us to work with generators of unknown sizes. So not only with lists, but actually with all stuff which generates values for us. And um, just as I think most people don't know it, um, we have an iterator. Iterator is basically a, a, a class which, um, or an object which contains next and iter as a dunder methods, and an iterable is only, it's a subset of that, uh, um, superset of that, um, um, containing just the next method, and um, this is the reason why I've e used it here. This means I can take anything which has some next method and turn it into an iterator, and then I go through the batches and I can work with that. This is preferable to the previous solution because um, Imagine we have a generator generating values, uh, and like, I mean like endless values, like it never stops, it will count, count to infinity. And in this case, we can really still work with that without creating a huge array, an, an infinite, uh, infinite large array, array. and um, yeah, that is the first step. I would say it's a little bit better already, at least uh, pre-312, uh, Python 3.12. But in Python 3.12, there's batched and it does exactly what we want here. And we don't have to write it ourselves, and we don't have to use Stack Overflow or ChatGPT or whatever tool comes next. Um, okay, let's start using our batched function, or not our, but actually the built-in batch, batched function. And um, we now wanna um, fetch data from the library, which um, only has like this API, which streams books to us, one after another. And um, this is the first step, we fetch the books, and we work on that in batches and do stuff with the book in batches. And yeah, one of the things we could do, for example, we wanna save the data first. Um, as a good data scientist, we wanna save the raw data maybe first before cleaning it up because we might mess up the cle uh, cleaning situation. Um, I think that is one of the tools many people likely know, which is uh, CSV. Um, which is already built in, so also no pandas uh, really necessary in this case, or polars if you're uh, on that side. And um, what we can reuse now is the type dict, the keys, so we have already our field names for our CSV or our Excel file. Next step, we write the header in our file, and, and then we can work in batches. For example, in this case, we write rows in, inside. Take 10 at, at a time. Um, keep in mind, most uh, cases we really have like um, an I.O. Um, issue, not so much a computation issue when we are working with data. Summary, okay, we started really small and um, we might have learned something new and I think um, many of the tools were already known but still I wanted to uh, um, have a baseline. Um, obviously, I think you already knew um, CSV, at least knew that it exists. Um, obviously, <laughs> I think Jason as well because um, yeah, I would say most people knew it already. Type dict, uh, at least some people might have heard, or most people might have heard, but um, that you can really use the keys uh, in, in, for example, writing some CSV might be new. And um, yeah, I have all of those examples in more detail with far more comments uh, in the code folder inside the repository. Remember, I have uh, um, the link in the beginning. Okay, um, then I showed you your lib requests. Um, it's basically a very simple fetch and send data via HTTPS. Um, it is restricted to get and post, so no put or delete um, requests to some API. Um, and the post is really determined by just, if I'm sending data, it's a post, if not, it's a get. And it, it's really not as bad as one might think, considering the vast amount of modules to replace it, like request, uh, HTTPX, I think a lot, like really a lot. And it's definitely worth a try if you only have a few non-async requests you want to do and don't want to um, may have a super large, I might maybe Docker image, for example. Then this might be uh, closest to be something new. The I slice um, um, part from the ITER tools um, module. Um, it basically works like this. M many people have already seen this, um, even in the beginner talk, I would say. Um, but it also works on generators with unknown size, and this makes it uh, really nice to work with. Um, caveat, it cannot go backwards or no, use negative indices. So for example, we can do this to reverse some list um, or reversing a string when we do it with a string, but we cannot do it uh, like this, so we cannot go back because it has no, um, um, it only has uh, uh, some kind of pointer to some um, um, 
to some generator. And finally, we learned about uh, batched. Um, it finally arrived not so long ago, which is why I think many people don't know it yet. Um, it works on all kinds of iterable stuff, so if you can do 4x in y, it might it works on that. And um, it gives us a tuple of the same type um, of the size we give it. So in this case, for example, we have a range of five, uh, numbers from zero to four, excluding the five, and we wanna have uh, always three numbers, we get this back. Is this working? Yeah, it works, cool. Um, <laughs> So cleaning data, yeah, I know wrong meme universe again, but I like data and I, it was an opportunity I had to take. Um, duplicate books. So we want to fetch data from the library, and but it is a magical library. It means the books will duplicate just randomly because it's magical and they will do it like this. And uh, the Orang Utan librarian of the Ansun University wants a list of unique books as CSV, obviously, because uh, that's what Orang Utans want, right? And uh, as it is not a lead code talk, there will be no obvious solution if P is in NP. Everyone knows it already, obviously. And also so no super clever text similarity function or stuff like that or duplication algorithms. It really is about showing you the tools and not really having a solution for duplication. Okay, this is our current version. We have some stuff we want to save and now we know that it is um, we have some duplicates and I just wrote in some filter duplicate uh, double books, but um, it has some filter magic um, up to you to really find something for yourself because I already um, have the books uh, there. It's not really about the, the algorithm here, but what we now find out, and this helps us using our next tool, is um, that the books always duplicate in pairs. So they are always siblings next to each other and that makes it a lot easier for us. So we have, in this case, a very naive approach. We have the last book, we go through a book generator, and ev every time we have our current book is different than the last book, we write it in our CSV. So, and we have those new things here to make sure we always have some kind of a book here and don't get an error. Um, what we could do instead is use Pairwise, a tool I think I haven't seen so much, to be honest, and um, it really does what, what, we, what, what the name says. It gives us all the um, things inside a generator or a list or a tuple or whatever you can uh, choose, even a string, and um, it always gives us two siblings. So from if you take the alphabet, it gives us A, B, B, C, C, D, and so on. And uh, we can use that to write only the, uh, the non-duplicates in our file. And yeah, this should work, right? I'm not so sure because um, in this case, we are getting from, for example, we have three books, we only get the one and two and two and three, and we're always saving the first of this tuple. So in this case, uh, the three will never be saved. That's bad. What we could do is do add more uh, code and more code is always good because we are paid by the lines of code, I think not. Um, and uh, yeah, and I uh, could, add more stuff and then do additional check and save it and now it works at least as intended. Um, but to be honest, I'm not a fan, really, because it adds more complexity and more complexity is always bad because we have to maintain it. And um, maybe we are switching jobs and it's not a bad thing because it's the next, problems, uh, <laughs> next person's problem, but um, yeah, most likely we are still have to maintain our own code. And what we can also use is, um, we could array the structuring, which means um, basically this had JavaScript first, well, but still um, we can use the full generator, put it in a list, and defy the full purpose of a generator that we have to work lazy, uh, that we can work lazily on some values. So in this case, it will, yeah, in an infinite generator, it will <laughs> create an infinitely large um, list, which is not what we might want. Obviously, uh, there's still, again, uh, something we have in the, in the tool belt, which is called chain, which chains different iterables and um, gives us f first all the elements of the first iterable, then all the elements of the next iterable, and so on. You can put um, arbitrary many um, iterables in there. In this case, I have this as a tuple with just one element. I put just one none in there, and I have our standard um, generator, which is wrongly written. Great find to myself. Um, I will fix that later in the repository. Um, and um, in the next step, 
we really will check um, if they are different. And um, as we now really uh, go through all the books and always write the second book if we uh, if it changed to the first book, um, we really get all the all the um, books and can really finally have some unique uh, CSV. Okay, what new models did we learn about here? Pairwise. Signature is pretty basic. We have an iterable, something we can iterate uh, over, and we get back another iterable, but it is nested, so we have uh, uh, tuples of size um, two, exactly two. Um, it uses an iterator, for example, range. So if you put range 999999, it still uh, won't crash our application, it, even if we have very little memory. So, um, yeah. And creates a new iterator like that until it is, um, yeah. Other example, um, we can take, for example, uh, um, a string, which is also iterable because we can iterate over the characters, and we get always two characters in this. It is lazy, so this means uh, I have put here a list, so I um, directly get the result, but um, if I call it without the list, it does nothing at first. Okay, then we learned about chain. Chain is basically chaining together different iterables, and that is. And in this case, it makes from hello world, it makes hello world, yay. And advantage, it's lazy, it doesn't create a, a large object, like for example, um, in this case, I put together two um, lists, um, or tuples, or whatever we have in there, which we can um, unpack, and um, in this case, we will have a smaller object, which basically just points to the right uh, um, 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 iterable we have there. It can also, which is uh, some hidden feature in that, uh, because it's a class method, um, um, we can create, we can flatten lists and flatten a list of stuff, for example, a list of lists with numbers inside and flattening that, I already seen also a lot of people having uh, uh, written their own code for that, but we don't have to do that. We can really do like stuff like that and in the end we get a long list with this, uh, things inside that and I think having this in your tool belt is actually useful because it makes the code a lot smaller. Um, yeah. And for the brevity of completeness, um, no monkey thing here, um, but still, uh, there's also something called uh, the chain map. And a chain map works similar to chain, but it works on, on mappable things. For example, we have the dictionaries here, A, B, and uh, A again. And in this case, we um, it goes through every one of those uh, uh, mappable, mappable things and gives us the first um, hit. In this case, A, would give us one and not the three from the end, and so on. And attention, it is a different behavior than you have with a dict and b dict when you when you um, you can unpack them inside a new dict and create create a completely fresh dict, but the um, order is completely the opposite. Um, again, full examples and much much more complex examples with typing and everything in the repository. Okay, um, this is more, <laughs> to be honest, I, I'm always honest, um, an excuse to show you grouping of context managers um, because I think it's a feature not, yeah, more people could use because um, um, of the nesting. I don't like if the code gets too nested and in this case, um, just if you didn't know it yet, um, you can put multiple context managers. Or, so context managers are the stuff where you put with some stuff, as some stuff, for example, with open file, as my file. Um, and you could put arbitrary many here and group them together and then in one step read and write to uh, read from one CSV file and write to another CSV file, which is uh, very nice to your memory. And um, yeah, so again, with the removed duplicates in this case. Okay, um, another thing. Um, we are having a library and uh, some of the books, I mean, it's a magical world and, and which gotten, haven't gotten back to our library since, I, I don't know, 300 years or 500 years or stuff like that. And we will want to ignore those books because um, they are, they are um, yeah, lost to us. And um, for example, in this, uh, I call the function height lost books. And in this case, um, we are having here our book again, and um, as we just learned in the beginning, we had the type dict to really know what is inside an object. So we're using that here. We are putting this here. Again, it's not, it's not a, a typing talk, but I think it's always nice to have those little helpers for us as developers, so I um, put that 
in here just um, because I can. Um, so what we want to do is uh, the year looks really wonky, to be honest, um, which means um, it's, it's always looking like this because it's a magical date and uh, I just came up with it to make my, my life more complicated in this case. Um, and uh, we want to really want to um, get filter out all those books which are too long ago um, and lent out. How does that look? Um, we have a function here which extracts the year, which is basically the very, very much hated uh, regex, but this is really simple. It really just says, uh, give me a number. And this should be easy, right? I want to have a number and this should be correct, right? But I don't trust myself and I don't really want to try all kinds of numbers and um, that's boring and we have computers for automating stuff, for example, testing stuff. And um, PyTest is an awesome tool, which is uh, for testing, and you should use it, but if you have really small scripts and stuff like that, and um, uh, small programs, you can also use DocTest. And um, it is actually pretty easy to use. We just need some documentation, and we all have documentation in our codes anyway, right? Most of the time. And um, yeah, let's start with the same function, but add some minimal documentation. In this case, um, some explanation, and afterwards how we would call it and what we expect it to be. And the result is, we can call it like that, by the way, really simple, like giving the full path and call it uh, the module doc, doc test, which is inside the Python standard library, and it gives us back, yeah, we did uh, not good, um, because we just <laughs> got the first digit. What we can now do is um, fix it because we now have this problem and if we fix it and we, if we have this uh, running of the test in our pipeline, of our, our um, deployment pipeline, we make sure that this error will never happen again, even um, if it's small because of small, maybe some, some kind of refactoring. What we now uh, do is we fix it because we say, okay, it needs to be at least one digit, but it can be more digits. That makes our life already a lot easier and we can act, uh, add a bunch more tests, for example, a negative uh, number, and as I correctly assumed, uh, we didn't catch for negative numbers so far, and now we can get that as well. We are confident enough, I mean, it's not 100%, there might be, still be edge cases, but we are confident enough that this works now, and we can go on filtering out our books. So in this case, we are extracting the year, we are um, comparing it to some arbitrary value. Obviously, we should put that in some constant in the beginning of the file because magical values, who knows in two years why we choose uh, minus 300, um, but still, um, yeah. Then um, another thing uh, we use is yield from. Um, I mean, who has heard of yield? Okay, great. Who has heard of yield from? A little bit less, nice. Um, so basically it does um, what you actually expect it to do. <laughs> um, it takes something you can iterate over and returns it. But it takes also um, into account that we have some magic inside of Python. For example, um, generators can also receive values. You, they not only can uh, give us values, they can actually receive data and work with the data if we want it to be. And a yield from actually takes care of yeah, just forwarding the data from whatever uses height loss books into whatever is inside our iterable, which means um, it takes away a lot of the work we have to do otherwise ourselves. So we want to keep track of the lost books because, um, yeah, customers, um, they change what they want very often. <laughs> and um, in this case, uh, they uh, not only wanted to hide the lost books, but they actually wanted a list afterwards. And what we can do is use a global state because why not? Because it's easy way. And um, in my opinion, it's really bad because global state can mess with us and our code. And it's, um, I would say never, but let's be cautious, almost never a good uh, idea. Um, yeah, we could also use that um, inside the function. So we have a local variable and in the end, we yield none to show off, hey, now we uh, gave you all the books which are there and now I give you, uh, I yield you all the uh, lost books. Not a fan, fan of that either because it is ugly with the return type. I have always take care of, uh, of uh, book and none and not only book and I want to keep it simple which is funny because that looks not more simple, to be honest. But what this does is basically it says to our, uh, that our function can give us uh, yields as books, so it generates one book after another. It expects no data, so this is a sending thing I talked about, 
and it also returns, so it can yield and return stuff. Um, yeah, this is how it looks like. We append it here, and then we return it in the very end, the books, and this is how we would use it. So we have some iterable in our height loss books. I have hidden away, funny, um, because it's height, um, hidden away the, the code, and um, I generate it here. I have the non-lost uh, lost books. I uh, co totally consume the full generator just so we have the return value at the end. And this is how we get the return value. It looks a little bit wonky that lies uh, <laughs> where because um, Python works by um, when it's generating through stuff, uh, iterating through stuff, in the end it uh, throws an exception called stop iteration. So it's not really an exception, but um, yeah, this is how it's uh, done and I don't think <laughs> we are gonna change that, uh, change that soon. But uh, inside that, we can get the value of the return value. And that um, allows us to get the generator as well as the uh, other stuff. Um, yeah, summary, generators yield values. Generators also uh, always also return a value inside of stop iteration. Per default, it's none. So what we defined in the, in the header, is it a good idea? No, <laughs> to be honest, most likely not, as it's kind of surprising behavior and you, would do, you really want your code to be non-surprising. Like if you have some new people working in your team or maybe someone fresh from university or fresh from school or anything like that, they should have easy code to work with because um, that makes it easier for them to, to be helpful very early. But why did we just see it? Why did I show you this? Maybe just to waste your time, but no. Uh, sometimes in one of script, it's a little bit faster. Sometimes it's, an, it's okay to have a hacky solution. Maybe you're writing uh, um, in the advent of code and just want a uh, one-off solution nobody needs to maintain afterwards. And um, it's still good to know that um, those generators have, can be a little bit more complicated than just yielding values. Um, the middle argument I already talked about, it allows us uh, to really send stuff into the generators and uh, adjust maybe the behavior, for example. And um, obviously it's a little bit out of scope, I would say, but still I wanted to, to show it because uh, that would have been the first question I might have asked uh, if I've seen it. Um, yeah, but how would I do it? Because I said uh, I wouldn't do it like this and um, perfect time to learn a new thing. Um, uh, we use an object to track the data, and in this case, I want to show you named tuple. Um, this is already as a different name uh, in the standard library for a long time without the uppercase N and T, um, but it allows us to, to have some kind of container of data which is um, immutable, so we cannot change it, but uh, is also easier accessible than zero and one. We can give it names, which makes it a lot nicer. It's relatively cheap. We only transport objects, which means we only give um, actually references to those objects and don't uh, really copy all the data. And um, we then yield this container with always the uh, um, most current version of the data. This is um, how it looks like. We have this book meta thing. I didn't come up with a better name, but still we have the current book we are yielding. We have the lost books. Um, as a list, and as you can see in, uh, in the below part, um, we have um, an object contained, uh, containing the lost books. We still add them here, um, but in, instead of just yielding one book after another, we're yielding a book meta, which contains the books as well as in reference to the lost books. Um, yeah. Okay, chapter three, summarize and key data. And uh, now the wonderful librarian wants us to get some data to get to know in which dimensions we're working here for how many stuff we have, how many kind of, uh, what kind of data and so on. And um, in the first step, he wants us to create an index of all the words in the title. So we, maybe we can search with that or stuff like that. Um, it's very simple. So we have, for example, the counts for 123 times or a 42 times, uh, magician 99 times and so on. Um, I would call the function pretty basic, like most common words in title, because in the, uh, he wants us to know all the words in the title. And um, we use a dictionary as a container to save those words and the counts. And then we go over all the words in our book here in our title and split the title and then go for every word in the title and count it up. And obviously we have to take care of the case where we don't have the word yet, so we have to create a new value, uh, a new key inside our word counter here, and um, so we don't have any key error. And um, this, I think many people already know, um, is default dict, um, but I 
think it's very important. It saves a lot of time and code, and this is the reason I, why I still put it in here, um, which basically says, okay, I'm a dictionary, and uh, whenever you ask me for any kind of key, I give you, uh, I use this function, in this case int, uh, to create some value for you if it's not there already. In this case, int with own, without any, any um, parameters gives us back zero. And um, this makes our code a little bit more Pythonic because we can just now add stuff up and without really taking care if we have the word already counted or not. But the, now the librarian will update its assignment. And so glad customers in real world always know what they want in the first iteration. But um, let's bear with me in this case. Um, yeah. So instead of um, the most common words in title, he wants to know in, the other in, in all the data. So what we're doing now is um, adding all the parts where we have a string inside. I just took three, but you can imagine that there are more um, columns in our data. And we split it and do it like this. And actually, this works. It's fine, to be honest. But I want to use this opportunity to show, again, the combination of chain. So we chain all the words and also um, show you a little bit more about our word generator. In this case, we have a word generator which actually creates a, a chain of words. So a chain, a nested chain of words, so which is not easy to work with because in this case we would always go th through, through, through the whole generator but also through the inner generator and which allows us to go back to the chain from iterable which uh, flattens the whole generator back to one word after another, which makes it a lot easier to count, which we do with the counter module. So counter basically <laughs> counts, surprise. And um, it gives us back um, a, a mapping from um, whatever it counts and the count of it. And you can convert it to a dictionary and um, yeah, work with that and uh, you don't have to count yourself. Obviously we can um, remember what I said about surprising behavior. This might be not surprising, but only because when you're junior, you don't know what's happening here because there are so many concepts in this one, you, you really don't know what's happening here. And um, at least I wouldn't, if I were fresh to Python, I would say, wow, it's really, what, what's all that? Um, for that, um, I would really advise to, to, to push out concepts into functions which contain a singular con concept and that words in the book, okay, I can get that now. And I can even go one further if I want to be really extreme and generate words from library. So we have another concept here. And if I want to be really extreme, I even can call chain from iterable as flatten because actually it flattens. Um, and to be honest, I'm not sure if I would really do that here or put a comment there, but just so you know, you can do it like this. Let's add some more data and no data picture this time, sorry. Um, Obviously, um, this is simple. We use the min land here. We just take the mineral, the, the min of uh, anything, and this is trivial, I would say. It's the same for max. Uh, the maximum is also trivial. Then we maybe want to know which family lent the most because we want to have some statistics, uh, which family chose uh, to be really open to libraries. Um, and um, also, we are interested in the largest bookshelf in the uh, library, for example. And a lot more ideas we, we can use, but uh, the basic uh, gist is that we have a bunch of different metrics we want to extract. Okay, start with the family length the most. Um, basically, we want to expect that it gives us back a string and an integer, the family name, and how many books. And we go over the not lent by books because um, when they're not lent by anyone, um, we can con just go over them and don't ignore them, but um, you can also, um, reverse this function by um, uh, this method by if book land by and then put all the stuff inside of that but I really like to have uh, as least as indentation as possible. Um, yeah, Then we split the name and we take the family name, the um, first one and obviously we have a lot of people here from different countries and not always a name consists of just two names um, but um, for that, we can max split and really take care of, okay, we just assume the first thing in your name is your, your first name, the rest is your last name. We don't care about middle names because that is the disk world. And in this case, we just think in this case that it works like this. Um, yeah. Uh, again, we can do the whole um, um, default dict thing and you know that already. 
Um, so we are using it here as well, using the, the default dict to, to, to count really by the family name. And, um, but what we also can do, <laughs> this is a lot of code, we can really, um, wait, let me go to, uh, it's grayed out, but I hope you can see it anyway. We can use group by, and group by allows us to give it a key function to, um, yeah, to, to already group our, uh, our collection by some data. This helps us, for example, um, um, because the grouping needs to be done in some way. Obviously, um, or not obviously, but maybe surprising for you is uh, that group by only works on subsequent data. So if the key changes uh, back and forth, it will generate multiple tuples and that will make it a little bit more weird. Just bear with me. Um, so we have to sort it first, which totally defies the purpose of a generator again, but still I wanted to show you group by and uh, now we just are fine with totally um, uh, consuming the generator. Um, in the end, uh, again, we are using named tuple to return because it, named tuple is always nicer to read than a tuple because now we can use biggest lender dot family and biggest lender dot lend books instead of zero and one to exit it. And yeah, yes, uh, the sorted part consumes our iterator. This is not so nice to be honest, but um, yeah, still we need this for group by because um, in the end group by really um, um, groups together values uh, in tuples like this and always the same key in the same place and as soon as the key changes it starts a new tuple and um, yeah just if you ever use group by this is a, a foot gun I used in myself in the past um, foot gun for the non-english speakers is a gun which points directly to your feet and if you shoot it it's not a good idea um, yeah so the librarian changed the get closer to this, <laughs> change the requirements again, ook, ook, because it's ook, ook, right? I want the total lenders, unique family names, and the amount of unlent books. Um, we have those three functions as to extract the data because it's not so complicated. Uh, we won't uh, go into that further, but um, we also want to have the one statistics object in the end. Again, a named tuple because it's small footprint, it's easy to use and it's um, immutable and I like immutable data because it cannot break somewhere in between. Um, yeah, then we have our function which is called gather statistics. Um, basically what we can do is we just um, call our functions, put it in there and everything's fine, right? Yeah, but the generator is consumed in the very first function and uh, that is, might not be what we really want, which is a good idea maybe to just uh, pre-generate all those books, put them in a list and then put the list in all those three functions and then it works and it should work actually, but uh, we still have the problem with our generator which is completely gone now and we have um, our huge list which might have billions of books um, inside. Um, so it really doesn't solve our problem. So um, there are two tools which might help us. Um, Itertools Reduce and Itertools T can help us here. Well, um, I have to say T is more like a fake solution, but I wanted to bring it in here because this guy is, has a reduced T cup and I need to get it in there. Let's start with Reduce. So we have our functions here. It gets getting kind of crowded, sorry for that. Um, then we have some mutable um, um, object, in this case a data class. I think data classes are well known. Um, I think five years ago it was like, what? <laughs> but, uh, um, and uh, this really is there to accumulate our data. So we have a set of our lenders, we have a set of our families, and we have unlent books. So which basically means uh, we have, uh, in this case, we already, uh, always have just one of each item because um, that is what sets do. It only contains one of each item. Then we have our gather statistics um, um, function again, which gives us back the statistics uh, from before. And this is what we adapt now. First step, we need a statistics reducer, which is a complicated name, but in the end it's basically taking a bunch of stuff and in the end we have one stuff, different stuff. And um, in this case, our statistics accumulator is a thing we always um, take from the last one and give to the next uh, run of this uh, statistics reducer. And the book is, in this case, um, the part where we uh, iterate through all the books, and this is always different. What we're doing here, if, um, if we have it lent by, we add it to the lenders and the families uh, sets, 
and if it, not, uh, it was not lent, uh, we um, accumulate the unlent books by one, so we, we increase it by one. And then we continue with the accumulator for the next run of the statistics reducer. This allows us to get all the data we want in um, just going once through all the items, which makes it pretty nice to use. And in the end, we call it like this, and then use it here. Why do I use different uh, objects in this case? Um, I really like to have the we're getting close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really like uh, to have uh, um, the stuff um, divided. So we have um, mutable data inside, which is fine because it makes it easier, but immutable data outside because it almost always makes the stuff easier. Uh, how much time left? Because we are pretty No more. No more. Oh, no. <laughs> I should have learned to rap, but I'm a metalhead, so it makes it a little bit hard. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No problems, yeah. So, um, but we're pretty far to the end, so it's uh, okay. <laughs> no, it's okay, it's okay. I'm so sorry, but seems really interesting, but if you want to know more, you can find him after his talk. Yeah. And if you have also any question, and also reach him to on Discord. Yeah. And thank you for your talk. And you can give him a round of applause. <laughs> thank you.